G'day everybody and welcome to the Risky Rollers podcast. I'm Dalton and I'm joined by Lockie. Hello! And today we're going to be discussing a little bit about D22, our doubles event last weekend, which uh, was such a, such a great time. We've got some new Chaos releases and then of course this weekend we're going up to ATC. Which is going to be sweet. Yeah, but a lot, a lot to talk about. Is there's so much going on? Um, before we get into any of that, massive shout out to Dice Arcade. Tim is an absolute legend, sponsoring the channel. You'll hear more from him a bit later. Also, new, freshly sponsoring the channel is another Tim. It's Waggers. Uh, Tim from Miniature Scenery. If you want to get some high quality MDF uh, terrain and scenery for your boards, or even MDF minis, which look amazing, by the way. If you haven't checked out any of Wagger's orc stuff, who's MDF, it looks incredible. You can't, you, you wouldn't know it's MDF if it didn't tell you. Uh, if you want any of that, check out Miniature Scenery. Links down in the description. He's awesome, absolute legend. Uh, in addition, if you want to chat with us, talk everything from 40k to Age of Stigma to Fantasy to like Warhammer Fantasy to Blood Bowl to Kill Team. Uh, Horus Heresy, Star Wars, Armada Legion, or apparently basketball. What? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's uh... Uh, jump into <laughs> yeah the NBA. That's jump me in the voice. Yep, yep. Jump into our Discord. Also links down below. Um, <laughs> absolutely fantastic crew in there. Always stuff going on. If you want help with the hobby, if you just want to chat about hobby, see some cool stuff, share some cool stuff. Love seeing you guys with sweet ass minis. Yeah, come jump down in there and share it around, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to see it? And it's then good you can stuff. Also come talk about how the Bucks are going to win the uh, championship this year. Woo-woo-woo. Yeah, uh, that all made sense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and if you like what we're doing and want even more, like an exclusive podcast, exclusive battle reports, um, as well as early access to bat reps, voting on who's in them and, all, uh, and what armies are used, go and join our Patreon. Um, all our patrons there are absolute legends. Thank you guys. You help us keep doing what we do. So I'm actually going to just real quick. Yeah. Actually, need to give yeah. a, a shout out to our latest patron, Nathan. So thank you, Nathan, for becoming um, a patron, a out, oh, outlaw yes. level patron. Uh, Doc, thanks for, I, for your support, mate. I, I saw that earlier. Yes. Is is this an, is this a Nathan we should know? No, we do not know. Said Nathan. Well, I don't know, okay. said Nathan. So, um, okay, cool. Big shout outs to Nathan. Well, um, thank you, Nathan. I guess we're doing shout outs suddenly for this guy. <laughs> we, Good well, work. Yeah. Everybody, every, look, everybody, get down to the Discord, show some love to Nathan. What a swell yeah. guy. I don't know the what he's The rest of the patrons, Discord, no. So. But Nathan, <laughs> Nathan specifically, who we don't know who is in Discord, but we will find him. You know what? You, sir. That's swell. He probably won't even be in the Discord. So, everyone will be like, <laughs> yeah, Nathan! <laughs> <laughs> So Nathan, if you are in the Discord, be sure to say, "Hey, yes, I'm in the Discord, and I'm here." Yeah. <laughs> okay. So shout outs to Nathan specifically. This isn't a normal Patreon thing, by the way, but Nathan specifically, massive shout out. Yeah. But we should do that. Not sure I think why. We will, we'll, but we will start doing that moving forward, maybe. Maybe we'll see, we'll see how we go with that one. Um, <laughs> okay. Cool. So quickly, lucky. Nothing. What nothing. have you been working on? Nothing. Nothing at all. No. So the reason why is because the last two weeks have been prep for our tournament. And they have. If it wasn't so, prepped. well, I mean, you you were working you were working on some terrain for that tournament. Oh yes, you're true. So you're true. You're right. Do that you, is yeah. true. <laughs> yes, I, I am both true and right, <laughs> and you should always listen to me. Um, uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I painted up um, a bunch of. Uh, what is the what is that in Imperialis? No, the battle sector, se- battle, Imperialis? Sector, back, battle sector, the battle, battle sector, sector kit. Yep, yep. Um, and I also got a Noctilith crown, which yes, which looks sweet. looks sick. Uh, I've got it probably about eighty yeah. percent done for the event. I've got to just like double down on the OSL effects and stuff like that. But um, you'll actually mm. see that in the latest. Yes, the latest bat rep coming out. Yep, that's already that's 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 out today. It's today, it's out like half an hour ago yes. before this podcast comes out. Yes, um, if you're on YouTube, so um, it's in there. We don't showcase it, but yeah. you can get glimpses of it. 
<laughs> well, yeah, you, you, it, it's it's there. It's cool. It's terrain piece, man. That's what it's there for. That's it. That's it. And that's it, man. And then everything Because God, being... God forbid you'd ever include it. God forbid you'd include it in your armies of fortification. Good lord. I know, but you know, maybe it'll get better. <laughs> one day. One day. Um, and um, yeah. the rest has been prepped for our event. It's just been recently gone, as you say. And yep. um, ATC. Yeah, sweet. Well, I mean, on a very similar note, I've uh, I've been working on like a double set of stuff for for that weekend for, for D twenty two and uh, and the battery coming out today. Um, so I've been working on a bunch of chaos chaos marines, a uh, couple of obliterators, a couple of chosen, a rhino chaos rhino, which is just an old second edition demos pattern rhino, mm. but like the old plastic kit. I had it unbuilt, sitting in a box, and like I built and painted a second edition rhino. It was pretty cool. Yeah, nice. Um, seeing how far kits have come is incredible. Um, so I went and did that. Uh, and the Master of Possession, Master of Executions was that one. Good old Mo. Mo. Um, 65 points of whoop ass. Nice. So that was cool. Uh, and actually, I finished painting that up with uh, with Jackson from Barnyard Wargaming, who gave me a hand with a bunch of that stuff. Yes. Because he, he came down, he stayed with me for the weekend, um, and he participated in D22, and then came on a bat rep, which is the one that is out today that you guys can see. Um, and he also helped me paint a bunch of terrain for D22. A bunch of Necron terrain, which came out looking pretty sweet, uh, as well as then just a handful of other bits and pieces that sort of filled out a couple of tables. Very, so, very nice. as I have just met... yeah. So that's uh, that, that's Jackson from Barnyard Wargaming. So if you enjoy their stuff, um, or if you don't, go check it out because it's some good stuff. They do live streams every week, podcasts very recently, um, and just a bunch of great hobby stuff. But uh, they came down, him and then Evil Jack, from uh, also from his channel, came down, participated in D22, our, our Risky Rollers Doubles 2022. As you can see, we need the abbreviation. Uh, he came down and participated, and then he and Jack came on our channel, and in the battle report that comes out today, as of half an hour ago, when this goes live, comes out today, we played them in a doubles game. Oh, yeah. Which 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 was epic. It was, it was hilarious. Oh, it was... I, it was... What... All right. Playing in a doubles format and that kind of stuff is some of the most fun you can have in 40k, in my opinion. Just It's just more people that you like throwing more dice and doing more cool stuff. If you like explosions and you like lots of mortal wounds going around, and this game is one to watch. Stupid, ridiculous stuff that happens that you're like... That's it was so good. It was great. It was so good. Um, so if, if you haven't checked it out already, go and check it out. It's It was it was a hilarious game. Lots of laughs. Uh, lots of cool stuff and and some 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 pretty some pretty good players and some pretty interesting stuff going on. Mm. Go check out uh, the latest battle report: the uh, Risky Rollers versus Barnyard Wargaming doubles game. So much fun! And then once you've checked that out, and once you've finished listening to this podcast, go check out Barnyard Wargaming, their YouTube channel. They do streams, all sorts of great stuff there. It's it's a good time. Hundred percent. So uh, let us then. Let's then kick off with a brief overview of, of D22 then, because we've mentioned it a few times now. Last week, uh, as of when this podcast goes out, uh, the 7th of May, we ran our second ever 40k event, which was the Risky Rollers Doubles 2022, which is our first doubles tournament. Overall, I'd say event went very well. People had fun, we had fun, people played a lot of 40k, people seemed to have a good time. I, yeah, I'm going to double down on that and say it wasn't just good. I think it's hard because I don't want to be like, oh, my God, we threw the Yeah, threw well, okay. So... Man, 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 man. But the response from this one was, I think, you know, tenfold, 100%, 200%, even better than our first event. Well, I wasn't going to say too much because it seems very sort of self-congratulatory, but you're not wrong. And... Uh, and if you if you're if you're like oh these guys are pretty pretty full of themselves, a fair. Secondly, <laughs> uh, go check out our Instagram. You can see a bunch of pictures and stuff. I'm going to be 
over the course of this weekend, uh, and in fact, I've already started it by the time this one goes out, putting up quick little stories on Instagram of all the different tables that happened and games happened during the day, um, because it's good fun. Um, tables were a step up from 40k is the way. Yeah. So I, I reckon, because they, they all had the, the scenic stuff on them, they all had the, the, the rocks and the, all that kind of stuff. Terrain was a little bit, there was more terrain on some of the tables. Like I, I don't think we had any that were as light as a couple of them at, the, at 40k is the way. Um, there were still some that were, we would say, light to medium. Um, but the terrain was definitely an improvement on that, which was already uh, quite good. Um, and I, the doubles format... I'd say significantly yep. good. It was one of the things that was commented yep. on more than ever throughout the day and yep. post. At, exactly, yeah. So the terrain is something we've been commented on uh, a lot. Uh, and then the doubles format as well... Um, We'll, we'll come up to time stuff in a moment, but as far as the actual format itself goes, I had a bunch of people come up to me going, you know, I really like this way of doing doubles, this um, this format, these adjustments. Uh, they were appreciated. Yeah. I, I didn't have any negative responses to the actual format itself and, and the way the player pack was set up. Um, yeah, so that, that was great. People seemed to have a good time. Everyone enjoyed themselves. Lots of prizes. We had Jack from Battle Maps as well. Big shout out to him. Yeah. Just show up on the day and be like, here's two maps and a box of minis to give away. Um, which was epic. That was absolutely so, amazing. So yeah, we've got to, I got to say a big, big thanks to, to Jack. It's, it's a bit hard. We're, we're still in the works of trying to facilitate our, our setup so we can better be interconnected with how Jack operates his business. But that will be coming in the future. Um, but yeah, I can't, I can't thank jack enough for 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 reaching out all those you know long time ago pretty much at the beginning of risky rollers and has been forever a, a key component not only in discord and, and part of our active community but also at um at supporting our events you know all, all of them now 100 percent as a sponsor for those so it's yeah he's a legend and um yeah, it's absolutely really to have these kinds of people on board yeah um so that that was great um, there's a couple of things to, to learn from the event as well that, we, that we've managed to do. Um, one of the things was regarding the, uh, the time as well. The only, the only really thing people ever had come up with and said, oh, maybe this could be changed, maybe it could be adjusted, um, especially in the few people I've talked to since the event, um, was mainly just the time and the size of the games. So the way we played it, if, if, you, uh, if you've missed it, um, it's doubles events. So there's two players on a team. Each player brings 1,500 points to the table, so it's a 3,000 point game, essentially. Um, so we, to speed that up, we played it as if it were a 2,000 point game. Uh, and there were reductions in CP and stratagem use, as well as army, army building and army composition had a few limitations. Um, and that played out, we'd allowed for two and a half hour rounds, which we extended to three hours in the day. But to get through games properly of that size, you really need it to be about a four hour round. Yeah. Um, or of course you can run the event with smaller games, i.e. a thousand points each, which is one of the other options we've had. And they're both things that we're discussing, um, as based on the feedback that we got from people who are at the event, yeah. we're looking at either a two day event where we're running four rounds at four hours each or keeping it a one day event and accessible, but maybe reducing the size to a thousand points per player and 2000 point games, just depending on, you know, how we feel the event scene as a whole can benefit from our, from what we're doing. Yeah, and we, we did a we did a bit of a tweak with um, the game that we played with Barnyard where we just tweaked yep. we tweaked a secondary change. So instead of each player picking three secondaries, you just pick two. And funny enough, actually, don't we have yep. actually spoken about this since? I really liked that like a lot more. Yes, um, yeah. And, I mean, the, the picking the two secondaries, you've still got all the scoring options, but now you haven't got that that tricky choice of oh, what's my third secondary? Exactly. You just get straight into the game because you've got the two that you like. Yeah. And it keeps um, and it definitely it, it speeds that up a bit, keeps scoring easy, keeps and keeps it moving. Yeah, and realistically, like it works well because more often than not, most ninth edition codexes are going to have their own faction specific, which barring a few armies is pretty a pretty decent. You know, you're probably going to yeah. pick one of them, and then the other one you can just liaise with your opponent about. You know, then you're not sapping from your opponent so much. I felt that in the games that yeah. we played as Gumby on the day. Um, when I was speaking to Lawrence about like, well, what secondary are you taking here? And you go, oh, I want to do this. And you go, well, I want to do that. And you're like, oh, okay, well. But, I, you know, when I broke it down after the fact, after we played the, um, the Barney game, I was like, yeah, I wouldn't have had any of those problems because it was just like you and I, when we were talking about it, it was like, I'm just going to do this and this. And 
and then you're like, yeah. yeah. And then you're like, I'm going to do this and this. Yep. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Perfect. Awesome. Easy. Yeah. So it works. But I mean, if, if you go and watch that game, you can see us so having some of those discussions as well. Um, and one of the other things as well is like, if you practice as a team, you can even get that down. And you can be working together more and assisting each other more as well. You can have plans for secondaries work together. There's a whole bunch of things you can be doing there as well that we weren't, but you could definitely implement, make games faster, make them more tactical, uh, and really push that format to its limit. And I'm excited to, to rewrite the player pack for next year. I'm excited to see what I can do to tweak that format, play a bunch of games, have a bunch of fun, and then just get as many people as we can into that whole rolling dice, drinking beers. 100%. And I think, um, you know, the... the... At, at the bright right, with Barnyard, Jackson definitely did point out. He's like, you know, props to to us writing, or you know, you and I writing that. The coming coming up with a design for it, and but that doesn't mean that it's static. You know, it's always going to be no. ever evolving and ever changing, even to the point of, um, you know. I I don't believe that anyone has the capacity to write a perfect player pack or a perfect game format, which means that every time it gets played, every time someone comes and participates in an event. I'm going to be hunting down feedback. I mean, what can I do better? What what can we do to make this game more enjoyable, more fun, more competitive, more tactical? And so every time we run this event, it's going to be a little bit better than the last one. Yeah. Um, and it's like, yeah, that that's that's what I'm all about. 100%. And the, um... If you want to, just another quick one as well, if you want to know what these events are going on, because we've got a couple more coming up we'll get to in a moment, Make sure you are in the Discord. I know we mentioned it as part of the plugs at the start, and you know you kind of tune that out because yeah, plugs, whatever. But if if you do want like early access to these events, the Discord is where it happens. Yeah. Um, all the events go up. Uh, the player packs and stuff go up in the Discord at least a few days, if not a full week, before they go public for everybody else. So if you want first run at them, make sure you're down there. That's it. Which. Uh, definitely comes up as well. I will quickly touch on the next event we're running, mm-hmm. which is a GT in August. Yeah. We're not set on numbers yet. It's at least 32, but it uh, might be larger than that. It's going to be a GT. We're going to be running it as a very tight, very competitive, very strict event. Yeah. Um, so if you want to... A uh, singles event, of course. So if you want to really push yourself and test what you, you yourself as a 40k player can do, Get list building, get thinking, get practicing. Make sure you're in the Discord. That's only a couple of weeks away, as far as, as, far as the player pack goes. I'm already working on that one. Lockie and I are doing a bunch of stuff for that behind the scenes. That'll be coming out very soon. Um, so, yeah, that should be good. Yeah, so that one's kind of our, I guess, stamp in the ground. Kind of take us seriously point yes, of contention. Yeah. Um, we want yep. to run events. We want to run five to six events a year, and I guess at least two of them be, you know, I don't want to say legit, but in terms of Hi- hyper competitive, yeah, in terms of a measuring a measuring play. point, i.e., globally, i.e., the rest of the competitive scene within Australia, Melbourne, etc., um, be within that bracket. Yeah. So this is the first of that. So there's going to be. And new things, and we, we, we've taken a lot yep. from what we've learned recently at, at, at events like Masters and like what you've had at Maitland and other events that we've gone to and gone, all right, let's try and curate this, um, what works for the current competitive scene whilst potentially seeing how we can go with that. Oh, you know, it'll be our first two day event, so that's a whole nother kettle of fish yep. to deal with. Um, still relying on the same things that make a quality risky rollers event which is you know high quality terrain and um and a good atmosphere and all these other bits and pieces so those things will not change um i mean one of the biggest challenges that we're probably going to do a whole podcast on is how to make competitive terrain that is also fun to play on and not just like you know cardboard squares yeah um which is a challenge that we're like struggling with at all like com- com- contending with at the moment and going back and forth on what can we do about this how can we fix this issue yeah um so that's, that's, that's a really interesting one we're going on at the moment. So we'll definitely do a big talk about that and big discussion about that at some point as well. Yeah, 100%. Because um, it, it's definitely possible to have a competitive, equal and fair terrain setup that doesn't look terrible. Like props, pro- props, props to the Maitland guys for, for throwing a fantastic event with competitive terrain. The tables weren't ideal. 
as far as how they looked. Well, it's very similar to what, tr- what we're probably going to be getting at ATC, what you get at, like, um, yeah. Uprising and, and a lot of these big... Well, the, 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 the WTC terrain setup, as far as gameplay goes, is very competitive. Yes, exactly. Which doesn't look very good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but that's not traditionally, that and then, no, no, that's not uh, but yeah, anyway, yeah, that's yeah. fine, and then and then and that yeah. works and, and for them. That's what they and do. That's great. Um, Absolutely, and hundred percent recommend if you can get to those team events, if you can get to a masters event, go to it. It's so much fun. Yeah, you're gonna learn so much. You're gonna you're gonna play good games. Masters was hundred percent. Yeah. Um, we 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 as risky rollers, event runners, we want to our shtick or our thing or. Uh, is we want we want one, to answer one, that one of our question. core philosophies for these yeah. events mm. is we want to go we want you to come and play an event whether hyper competitive or one of our casual fun events and we want you to be able to play on terrain that you would see on a battle report yes that you look at the terrain and go that's a table that I will I want to play on just because the table looks so good and then we want you to put your beautiful armies on there that you've spent all your time and, and, and effort on we want you to put those on there and just have a fantastic experience whether this is our super competitive um, GT or what if we run in the future as well, or one of our 40k is the way or a doubles event or an end of the year event, which we'll talk more about as we get closer to it, that are the more casual ones. We just want to make every part of that experience as good as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Can, we'll, um, don't need to say any more. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that note, let's have a quick break. We'll hear from Tim from Dice Arcade. Um, who was also a massive supporter of D22 and uh, gave us a bunch of prize support, including a, uh, a code for everyone was there for an extra discount on uh, purchases on top of the normal Risky Rollers one, um, which was fantastically generous and, and very nice of him. Um, so we'll hear a bit from Tim and we'll be back right after to talk about uh, ATC. Sweet. Dicearcade.com.au all the biggest brands and miniatures in Wargaming. Free postage over $250. All right, thanks for that one, Tim. So, uh, as we mentioned at the start, you and I have a big event this weekend. As of the time this podcast comes out, uh, which is Saturday the 14th of May, you and I are in, uh, not Newcastle, Madawi, for the Australian Team Championships as part of the Victorian team, the Vic Bulls. It's the, isn't it the ANZ Team Championships? I think it's I think it's the ANZ TC, it's the Australian New Zealand Team Championships. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure the... But New the Zealand a- aren't coming this year. Yeah, because the ATC originally, I think it's the American Team Championship, right? Right. Yeah, I, I think so. But then it's also, it's run by the ATC committee, the Australian Team Championship. Yeah, committee. it's stupid. So... It's it's this weird conglomeration of things. It's referred to as both ATC and ANZTC. Yeah. I think ANZTC is the... New official term. ...application. Yeah. But I think ATC is the more recognisable and more used term. Sad makes more sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so because of course, New Zealand aren't coming because their lockdown restrictions are still in place and they can't travel and all a whole bunch of stuff down there. So instead, there's seven Australian teams and a, new, a second New South Wales team, the New South Wales Mercs, the mercenaries, who make up the numbers. Yep. Cool. So we're going up to that. Now, there's certain things that we can and can't talk about uh, until after the event. Yep. And this is still coming out on the day of the first the first day of the event, the Saturday. Um, but what we can talk about is, is the teams and what the event is. So it's a two-day team event. Um, there's a team from each state in Australia and, as mentioned, two from New South Wales um, as they're hosting. Um, and each team consists of eight players and up to two coaches. Um, so in this case, you're a player and I'm a coach mm-hmm. um, for the Victorian team. And then they play off their three games in the first day and then two games in the second day. Um and then the, the winner is the team that comes out with the most round wins and failing that, the most points. And it's, it's fairly straightforward. Yeah, so two things um, is that I think we should inform yep. the people who are maybe not aware of how Team Sting runs in terms of yep. how you score. And then also... Well, let's, 
Um, yep. It's just the general structure of what a team's event is rather than um, what it's... Yeah. So, 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 so it's, it's not eight games, eight individual games of 40K. No. Well, it kind of is, it is and it isn't. So how about I, I'll run through what a player experience is to go to a team event. Mm-hmm. I mean, geez, your um, Maitland experience is a perfect example. It, it, exactly. So that I was went, a precursor to, that we used as a bit of a... Um, bit of a test a bit run a test. for a lot, of, a lot of things. Yeah, test, test run so, for a few things. So five of us from the team, um, which was Lee Abbey, the team captain, Dean Sinbeck from Blog for the Blood God, um, Reese Cunningham, Matt Clegg, and Dave Guevara, who runs... Uh, GTO. Tar- or is part, is part of the Target Acquired Wargaming group and runs GTO, the Geelong Town Open, which Lawrence and I are going to in a couple of months, um, and is the other coach. So I'm one coach, he's the other coach for the Vic Bulls team. Um, we all went up to Maitland a couple of weeks ago, um, which is where I first met and streamed with Jackson from Barnyard Wargaming and then went up to the tournament with. And we played in the team event run by Good Games at Maitland, um, which was fantastic, and we ended up winning that event as well. And using that as a bit of a test bed and a dry run for the way team events run and the way the big team can go at this event, how their lists run, how the pairings process all works, and, and so on. Um, so, at ATC, essentially how it will work is your team of eight to ten, so eight players and up to two coaches. You might have none, but I think almost all the teams have at least one. Um, they, they, they rock up and they get paired into the team they're going into. Now, how this works then is you have what's called a pairings process. And there's a bit of time allocated for this where both captains and the the whole teams in general, but mainly the captains get together and they organize which players are going to play the other team's players. Um, Now, this may vary slightly depending on how tables that with terrain and who gets to pick what terrain. But essentially, there's a roll off to see which captain gets priority. Uh, and the winner of the roll-off gets to pick the first table of terrain. Now, both captains put forward blind, so as in they don't know who the other team is putting forward, a single player slash list, or player and list. Um, And then they reveal what those are, uh, and then they take the, the one that their opponent has put forward and choose two of their own players, their own lists, to go in against that player. Then they receive their opponent's selection as well for the same thing. And then they choose which list their player will play into. So let's say, uh, Lockie, that I'm organizing pairings and you're on the team. Mm -hmm. And I go, well, my first put up for for this team event, for example, VTC, which will happen in a few months, Victorian Team Championships. And I go, all right, Lockie's going to be my first put up for this event. Mm-hmm. I give Lockie to my opponent, um, and let's say you're running uh, Thousand Suns. Chaos Knights. Or well, Thousand Suns, sure. Let's say you're running Thousand Suns, and I go, all right, Lockie, this, this is my first put up. It's Lockie playing Thousand Suns. And then my opponent gives me, you know, Joe Blow running Drakari. And I go, cool. Well, on my team, I've also got. Um, this, you know, say I've got Jake running Chaos Knights and Lawrence running Admech, and I go, well, I'm going to put both those into them, and I hand those three lists back to my opponent. That is his list, Joe Blow running his uh, Drakari, and Lawrence, Admech, and Jake's Chaos Knights back to my opponent, and my opponent hands me back Lockie's list along with, um, let's say, uh, Orcs and Sisters. On- Orcs and, orcs and sisters. Whatever. And I then look at that and I go, well, well, do I want Lockie to play either the orcs or the sisters? And let's say I, I look at Lockie's thousand sons and go, well, he's going to fare better into the orcs. Or the rest of my team will fare worse into the orcs than he will. And I go, and I, I can then choose, all right, well, then in that case, Lockie is going to play orcs. And I go, I've chosen Lockie and orcs. Uh, and then whoever won the roll off gets to choose which table first. They pick one of the tables that's allocated to the team. And then the other player picks one mm-hmm. um, to play on. Uh, and then their sister's player goes back into their pool. hand of players to, to use. They're back into their pool. Yep. 
Um, and then let's say they choose Lawrence Abmech to face into their Drakari. And then I get Jake back and I can use Jake in the next round of pairings. Yeah. And that's how each game is essentially determined right until the last game when there are only two lists left and they have to play each other. Exactly. Um, so for a four player event, this is very quick. For a five player event, it's slightly longer because it's an extra round of pairings. And for an eight player event, there are, I believe, four distinct rounds of, sorry, six distinct rounds of pairings. Yep. To get to get down to the end. So there's a lot of um, part of what the whole sounds, game is is also yeah. in pairings in a teams event. So normally, yeah. in fact, a, almost all of what a teams event is about is pairings. Once you get down to the actual games, it's like it's just playing 40k games. Yeah. But pairings can win or lose a round. Yeah. Just like um, it, it's yeah. just that extra level of micro. You know, where you could argue that yeah. like secondaries can make or break an army then deployment can make or break the game then you know turn three may make make or break you know um you want to scale it back to as micro as you can go well in teams there's a whole nother level before anyone's even looked at each other at playing it's at, it's at the process yeah. um which is cool which like, is super new sounds... for me you know it's new for both yeah. of us in terms of this yeah. whole process so it it's is. been a it's been a great pretty 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 epic roller coaster and learning all this stuff. So it's been cool. It has been, yeah, yeah. So, so that's that's really cool. I mean, it sounds complicated, but like if, if you see it done a couple of times, it'll click and you'll understand how it works. Um, but it is it's a really interesting system, and it adds, as you're saying, it adds that extra level of management, that extra level of um, of, of of risk and reward to, to to the way you can play it. Almost like a mini game before you start the round. Mm. Um, so yeah. The other so, thing following the pairings, yeah. The other thing that's he- epic about this process is it can sway list construction. Wait, sorry, it does sway and yep. alter and affect list construction entirely. Absolutely. So, so a team that's going to an event will design their lists with this process in mind. I can I can sit there and go, well, all right, Lockie and his um his thousand sons, well. I want to use them as my first put up when I don't know what my opponent's going to put into them, which means I don't necessarily need a list that's going to win a game, like win big against some armies and lose big against others. I want a list that is going to take a solid, if they win, it's going to be small, but if they lose, it's still going to be small. They're going to score points no matter what. So I can build your Thousand Suns list to make to whatever the current meta is Mm. and go this is a list that will always score at least 60 points in the game, win or lose. Yep. They can get more than that, but they're never going to get less than that. So, so the other... And I can build that list and go, here is your list, or, or here is the list I'm putting up. So this is that means that no matter what my opponent puts into it, it's just going to cruise straight down the middle and be reliable and gives me more options for my other lists and go, well, that means that I can make, you know, say... Lawrence's Admech and Jake's Chaos Knights, I can have them build super swingy lists that if they go into the right opponent might score big and win by like, you know, 90 points. Yeah. Um, but only against certain opponents because I can know that I can use Lockie's list to like mitigate what my opponent can actually do to me. Yeah. So the other key point of why this yeah. is the way it is is based on how it's all scored. So it's scored it's, by... So, a... so that's... Yeah, by a differential rating. So, yeah. so that's actually the, the next the next point I was going to get into as far as walking through the way around would go from a player experience side. So, so, so let's say that this pairing process is done, right? You're playing into what do we say you're playing into? Orcs with your mm. thousand sons, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, who was it? Lawrence is playing into Drakari. The pairing process happened a couple more times, and say Jake with his Chaos Knights is playing into. Um, you know, the sisters, little Timmy, Timmy finally, yeah. with his with his sisters, yeah. yeah, and then and then, you know, I'm playing with Necrons because I'm a mad lad who brought Necrons to a competitive event for some reason, uh, into you know, regular nights, right? Mm-hmm. Imperial nights, uh, and and so those other games are going on, and you're playing a thousand suns, um, and then you, you know, you you work hard, you you play well, you manage your stuff well, and you end up coming out with a win of like. 73 to uh, 55 like 55 right Mm -hmm. 73 to 55 cool and you go well cool you've just won 
Now, unlike a normal singles event where your battle points are scored based on victory points, uh, a team's event scores points based on a differential. Uh, what that means is the amount by which you beat your opponent is what matters for for your battle for your uh, like victory points for the for the round, not you gain, the amount of gain points, points you scored on the team game. team points, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Yeah, exactly. So if you beat them seventy three to fifty five, well, you've beat them by eighteen points. So that's actually not a very big differential. Yes, small. Um, so. An 18 point differential would be a, I think a 15 to five off the top of my head. Um, which isn't, which isn't bad. No, it's still good. Sorry, that, that's not right. Uh, 16 to four, sorry, uh, 14 to six, I think it would be. Yeah, I thought, I thought it might even be. Yeah, four, four, 14 to six, yeah. I think. I thought it might even be a 13 to seven, but yeah. 13 to seven. You're more than 16 up, so I think it's a 14 to 6. Okay. For argument's sake, we'll say that it's a 14 to 6, because this can like vary slightly between different events as to how what differentials cause what. Let's say it's a 14 to 6. Uh, and what that means is, for the round, you score 14 points for your team, yep. uh, and your opponent scores 6 points for their team. Yep. So even though they lost, they're still putting points on the board for their team. Exactly. Um, and then... So you've scored your 14 points. You go, cool. Well, uh, let's say you finish your game quickly as well. You finished your game early. Uh, Lawrence and his Admech have, are absolutely wiping the Drakari. They got first turn. They got some lucky rolls against all the boats. Uh, Lawrence is scoring like 85 points and the opponent is going to score like 12. That's a 20. Um, which, is, which is a 20. So to Lawrence, because he's got such a massive points differential... Um, the game's not over yet, but you can see it's going that way. He's going to score 20 team points, and his opponent's just going to score zero. Um, now, meanwhile, Jake is having a very close game. Um, you know, it could go either way. Not really sure yet. It's hard to tell. Uh, meanwhile, because I brought Necrons to a tournament, because I'm a mad lad who for some reason brought them along, I'm going down hard, and I'm going to score zero. All right? I've only scored three points for... for two banners and then one banner in three turns and I'm not holding any objectives anymore because I've been shot off the board uh, and I'm going to take a big, big old fat zero. So what that means is you know the opponent's team is, is going to score a 20 against me. They've scored a zero and they've scored a six. It means that you need uh, Jake's team with Jake's game to go our way if you want us to win the round. In fact, you need it to go our way enough to offset the six. Um, which means he needs to score, what is it, a 14 to win us the round. That, that, that's not right. He, he needs to score a a, more, a 7 to win us the round. Sorry. Yes. So, so what that means is you finish the game and you can go and talk to your coach and go, all right, I've won this, he's won that. Coach will go over to Jake and go, all right, you need to play. You can't give tactical advice. Coach can go over and go, you need to... Give it a uh, a good uh, a good run. Don't don't take risks. Don't open yourself up to big losses. Just keep it steady. Hold hold uh, hold your middle points. Play it safe. We need at least a seven. Yeah. And so that, then Jake can play out the rest of his game, going cool. I don't actually need to win the game. All I need to do is not lose by enough to give my opponent the seven. Yeah. Like give my opponent a fourteen. So he, so he can sit there and he can go, well, actually, I don't need to worry about scoring all these points in this objective. Yeah. And his entire game can change. He can go, well, I can lose. All I need to do is score at least, you know, uh, 70, 70 points yeah. or 65 points. Yeah. Um, so that when my opponent does beat me, he can't beat me by a margin more than this. Therefore, I will score a minimum of seven points and win us, win the team the round. Yeah. And he can play a tight game. He can, he can fall back. Uh, he can give up points in the game. He can not take risks that he would otherwise take if he was trying to win his game. And he comes out of it, uh, and he actually scores eight points for the team, because why not? Um, and the team actually comes out of it having won the round by two battle points, or two team points overall. Even though uh, you took you know two losses and two wins, he had more points overall, because his team worked together and played together as a team, and he came out with it. Uh, and then that 
that's pretty much it. Like I, I, I feel like I've, I've sort of covered a, a fair bit of that experience as a whole. Yeah. I uh, tried to touch on as many different aspects of it as you can. And there's a bunch more stuff that goes into it as well. Um, teams can prep a bunch in advance. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that the, that the coaches and stuff can be prepped to do. Um, list building, it's everything. I mean, for example, you wouldn't let someone bring Necrons. You'd be like, what are you doing? We're putting you on like Eldar or something instead. Yeah. Like a good army. But uh, so, so you do stuff like that. You'd, you'd make sure that your team has a good line of armies and a good line of players. Uh, and then you make sure they can all work together and you've got a good grasp on, on team strategy as a whole, as well as individual strategies for a game. 100%. Yeah. And, and with... It's weird because it's, it's, it's hard to be specific. Sorry, it's hard to be informative without being specific. But what ends up happening is that it's not only list construction is altered, but playstyle and playstyle archetypes get sort of created. And then you end up having this process of playing armies or playing 40k in general a certain way, um, which is yep. kind of... Uh, actually, it is counterintuitive to singles. It's literally... No, it's, 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 you cannot compare them. Yeah. They are... They're, 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 they're different events and you play them differently and you approach games in them differently. Yeah. Which is, which is, you know, it's, it's, um, it's been a challenge. Well, maybe not challenge. Challenge is the wrong word. Um, it's been an interesting learning curve. Put it that yeah, way. Yeah. Um, to kind of look at the game. Well, I'm sorry, let me rephrase. It has forced me as a player to look at the game entirely differently, and I've learned yeah. so much from being forced i guess not you know indirectly but um to look at the game with you know these with this lens on or through this lens um because then yep. you really personally i think everyone who wants to play competitive should go play teams but not just play teams with your mates try and play on a team that knows the process they don't need to be a good team they don't need to really you know do all the micro and figure it all out and be absolutely slaying on the pairings process but at least with someone who knows how the process goes in terms of a concept yeah because the process is someone a team who that sort you guys of... will go through yeah to figure out you know what everyone else is doing what your structure is doing and how you want that to work and how you think that's going to work that is going to make you a better 40k player for everything period because yeah, absolutely. i've seen that in myself you know so yeah um oh you know i'm yet to see the event we're going to what um i've i found out last night is the most uh i think arguably the most prestigious event in the country so yeah it's it's one of them teams are definitely one of the most if not the most popular format for the game in australia yeah i think i think singles beats it on technicality and that more people are in it but it, it's also potential because the more events are run with singles um teams is definitely popular it, it's it's it keeps it's a recurring popular format in australia at least yeah well i mean the boys from um down to the 40k were, were talking about the i guess the, the severity in the sense of the high stakes that is atc it is the yeah. the highest i guess level of and this is their words of 40k um yeah that, that, that we have in Australia because we don't have things. I mean, we do have Uprising, which is a is, is a super major, but we don't have the, the likes of the massive, you know, f we don't have a frontline gaming or a game workshop support down here or any of those kinds of things. So this is kind of yeah. our premium yeah. thing, which is cool. And I'm, man, I'm so wrapped to be a part of it. I think it's just living, yeah, living I mean, in a different it's... world at the moment, man. It's just crazy, you know. It's, it's, it's incredible. Um... Uh, I'm very grateful for everyone that's been able to give, give, give me oh, and ask really the opportunity to be part of it it's just uh, it's very humbling so um it is it is you know we're we're, we're gonna and, be and covering yeah. more of the details as it goes and uh oh sorry yeah. not as it goes po post the event um and so so yeah so this comes back to one of the things we can't actually talk too much about it because the, the team is and us, us as well we're taking it quite seriously we're going all right we we are going to go and compete yeah man i want that crown i want to win we can 
Oh yeah, hundred percent. And 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 I mean, it, it's one of those things as well. Is that it's taking the game seriously, but it's taking the game in a different context where we normally do, which is to, you know, throw dice, have a beer, have a laugh. It's like, well, all right, we're actually like really competing, which is again another entirely different experience to the game, mm. um, which is fantastic. And I, I do recommend trying it at least once. Um, really competing hard for something in the game. Even if even if you're a casual player, I'd say, look, give it a shot. Um, it'll teach you stuff about the game and, you know, it'll teach you stuff about yourself and how you are as, as a player and, and a person to compete. For sure. Um, and, yeah, I'll, I'll echo your statement as well. It, it's it's a massive honour to be, to be uh, and a privilege and, and, and so on, to, to be on the team and to, to be able to help out. Um, albeit as a coach, not as a player, but um, it's still it's still incredible, and I've learnt I've learnt an incredible amount, and I, and I'm sure you'll see that in in battle reports and things as well that are coming out currently. It's just the the adjustments to the way we think and, and play games. Yeah, um, I think that is that, incredible. That's it. That's going to be inevitable yeah. for sure. And then, and all in all, it's just going to end up creating a better product um, for all you. Oh yeah, have listeners out yeah. there. Yeah, but um. Look, I mean, I think on that note, I think we pretty run up to the end of things we can can really talk about with it. Yeah, it's annoying because uh, I'm like, until after the event. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, I'm going to get doing But I can't. <laughs> we can't. But well, it's look, coming. As... Don't worry, it's coming, everyone. You'll 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 get the uh, you'll get the inside scoop. Well, not the inside scoop, but you'll get the uh, the post scoop. Um, yeah. After and I mean, look, as as this podcast comes out, uh, it's Saturday the fourteenth, and tomorrow Sunday the fifteenth of may we'll be playing uh, we're up we can we're competing at the moment we'll be putting up uh, updates down in the discord and stuff as well uh not as not as frequent not as in-depth as we do for our own events and stuff it won't be full on instagram reels and that kind of stuff but we will be just uh, updating people on scores how the team is going how the day is going overall um so you can jump down in there and check that out and i suspect uh i think i read somewhere that the that the down under 40k guys will be covering it online as well uh, as it goes on but it's not streamed i'm pretty sure um i see i'm still i'm still in my head i've got the i've got three different player packs in my head at the moment which is ours the the baitland event and this one yeah Uh, i don't i I don't too long after any atc is streamed yeah Um, but um but regardless make sure you're down in a discord to to chat about all of that um, cause we'll definitely be keeping that updated as the day goes on. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, I mean, look, without any, without anything else to go on, I think we'll probably wrap that one up. Definitely. Um, thank you all for listening. Make sure to check out both Tim's Dice Arcade and Minch Scenery for all of the great stuff they do. If you want models, if you want scenery and anything else in between, they've have you covered. Um, as we mentioned, of course, earlier, Jack from Battle Maps, Fantastic. Uh, I think Dice Arcade are looking to stock those in the near future. Oh, they already do. They already do? All right. So if you want Australian-designed, manufactured, distributed, and sold battle maps uh, for gaming on, premium neoprene, um, that, that's like your mousepad-type material, premium mats, check out Dice Arcade. They're supplied by Battle Maps AU, which is Jack, who is an absolute legend. Yeah. High-quality stuff. You can see it in all our bat reps. It's just great. So make sure to, to get on that as well. Uh, jump into a Discord to chat. Keep up, up to date with all of the ANZTC stuff, uh, all the other event stuff, and just hobbies in general. Um, Patreon, if you want to support us, get extra stuff. It's all good stuff, etc. You know the drill. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye.